what you see is a scaled model of a reusable launch vehicle. Yes, a reusable launch vehicle being mastered by the Indian Space Research Organization. The final RLV or the reusable launch vehicle will be about double the size of this. This is a scaled model and ISRO has tested it twice successfully in the scaled model test. I have with me Mr. Sunil, who is the program director for the group which is leading the reusable launch vehicle. Now, Sunil sir, what is the importance of this reusable launch vehicle which we see here? Uh, this particular vehicle uh, is basically a forerunner to uh, the future uh, two-stage show orbit or single-stage show orbit. So if you see the vehicle as such, uh, as you can see, there are different parts, different important components in the system. That basically, if you see the wings, so this gives the lift for the vehicle. And Which is uh, what makes it stable, stable. During, fly, during fly. It gives a sufficient lift to take it uh, through the atmosphere and then land at a particular location. And there are this we call as rudders and elevons, which can uh, give you control, which controls the vehicle through the flight. As you move forward, uh, this is a leading edge of the uh, wing uh, and this is the overall body of the vehicle and this houses the avionic systems. So which inside. is where you will house fi finally the avionics. Yeah, fin inside. Avionics is going to come inside the system. We have all the control systems, everything is going to be there. Then as you move forward, and one more thing what I like to point out is that during the flight uh, through atmosphere, it require a lot of heat is generated. Like any other uh, re-entry vehicle, there will be heat generated. So it will have a thermal protection system when it goes to the final configuration of the orbital re-entry vehicle. Now, let's stop here and talk a little bit. The only reusable vehicles which we have seen is the space shuttle by America, which used to carry astronauts. Uh, it has been retired. Uh, and we had Buran by Russia, which flew only once. In the 21st century, when everybody else has retired doing reusable winged rockets, why is ISRO doing winged rockets? ISRO is having an objective to uh, fly a vehicle which is more cost effective. The economy should be viable so that we can have very low cost access to space. So this vehicle uh, actually satisfies that need because it is going to have a configuration where the stage is going to fly back. So we can reuse the stage and then go ahead with the next mission. So that way we can bring down the overall cost of it. So that's a basic intention. What now, see, in reusability, most people see those images of the SpaceX rockets coming back. They are only hollow stages which they are bringing back. It may be complicated avionics to bring it back but bringing the upper stage which is the most expensive electronic part is that the game changer for the the idea for isro no uh, what isro is looking at is uh, we should, as i told earlier we should have a low cost access phase so the uh, w when we move forward uh, to a TSTO sort of vehicle uh, we can fly which is two stage to orbit, stage orbit uh, where we can bring that bring back fly back the first stage and the the, the topmost stage or so the upper stage can carry a satellite put it in the orbit and then come back so there is an advantage there uh, here when you take SpaceX they are trying to bring back the spent stage back to that by using a retro propulsion so uh, both are reusable but we have some advantage of uh, getting the uh, basic vehicle go to orbit and bring back the stage. Which also has the brain and the most expensive yes, exactly. part. Exactly. Because a hollow tube is a hollow tube. Right. Whereas the brain upper part which we are trying to do is the more expensive part. Now, how difficult and what is important about the cone? Because all of this would be where heat would be generated yes, when exactly. it is coming back. We have, uh, as I told earlier, this vehicle will be uh, bonded with thermal protection system because it has to take care of the heat uh, which is generated during the atmospheric re-entry. And we have uh, tiles, silica tiles uh, at the bottom region and we have flexible insulation on the top. Why flexible insulation is? Here the heat flux is going to be much, much lesser compared to the Fa the bottom face which is going to face the flow. And when you move forward, uh, this is a nose cap. Here, uh, this nose cap also will be seeing very high heat because your diameter is less. And going to so see what material is this? This carbon carbon. Carbon carbon. This is material what we use uh, uh, to stand higher temperatures. Because here, uh, we are going to see very high temperatures. Now, now, what, what has been the two tests which have been done? 
See, we did we did uh, a, a re-entry experiment in Chile, uh, a high altitude test in Chile, which is called technology demonstrator for RLV, which flew at a altitude and then came back. And second is the landing experiment, which we read recently in last April, which was a successful mission. And now we are planning for the next landing experiment because always we need to have a follow-up mission so that we can prove the technology. Now let's technology. take a look on the other side also. So both sides look very similar? Yes, exactly. It's a symmetric body. It's a symmetric body because being a f uh, flying system, it should be symmetric. It's having wings on both sides, then only you can have then uh, it is having the landing gear. The landing gear is similar to what an airplane would have? Similar to that. Similar to that. Um, uh, only thing is that loading part is going to be different. That depends on the vehicle, what you are, what's being fitted to. So we, we have uh, three landing gears. And this we call as a nose landing gear. And we have two main landing gears. Because when it lands, it lands on the main landing gear first. And then nose uh, landing gear is going to touch down. So this experiment we are able to successfully do in uh, next mission. So, so. How soon can we have the final orbital mission and how soon can we see a full configuration of the reusable launch vehicle flying from yeah, it? It takes some more time for us because now we are in the phase of developing the critical technology. It may take another two, two or three years time frame for uh, bringing all these things together into one system and then fly. So definitely it's, it's, in, the, it's in the offing. Now, we've named it Pushpak, is it? After the famous Pushpak Viman that we've named it, what is the... We can take it so, because uh, it's in the mythology, it is there. So, we can take it so. So, this is India's reusable launch vehicle. Two tests have been done. A final orbital test will be done. And then the full system will be deployed very soon. India wants very low cost access to space. Name Pushpak could be after the Pushpak Viman, the famous Pushpak Viman, which is mentioned in the Ramayan. But ultimately, low cost access to space is going to decide how you and I benefit from space technology. Thanks a lot, Mr. Thank Suri. You, sir. Thank you, sir. So nice of you to speak Thank to you. us. Thank you. So that was the 21st century reusable launch vehicle being mastered by the Indian Space Research Organization. With camera person S.P. Babu at the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center in Tiruvananthapuram, Pallav Bagla for NDTV.